friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we have a fun little project that we are going to work on. I want to show you how easy it is to move perennials that were in a container into your landscape so that you can use them and enjoy them for years to come. If you remember, gosh, back in uh, springtime, we'll just say that because I don't remember when it was. Springtime, I uh, planted up this shade container that I have had on my back porch all summer long. We put in two different kinds of ferns, a hosta and some lamian, and I thoroughly enjoyed it all summer long because it's in that nice deep shady part of our back porch. But now that it is September, I am ready to transition these perennials out of the container and put them into the landscape. Here we are, of course, in front of the forest pansy bed. And this bed um, we've been into many, many, many times before. But if you'll remember, this bed gives me a little bit of everything. I have got deep shade, I've got light shade, I've got full sun. So I've got plenty of different places to put these fantastic perennials, which is really nice because for example, I have two perennial ferns. I have the Crested Surf from Proven Winners, and then I have one of my favorite ferns, Lady in Red. And of course, ferns do like the nice deep shade and they like it moist. These two ferns can handle more moisture than any of my other perennials. So I'm gonna find kind of a wet spot and put those guys in there and let them flourish. And then I have sweet little June hosta. June is an absolute classic hosta. It has been around for a number of years, but it has this really pretty blue color to it with a dark green edge. So I'm gonna find, and it stays a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna find a spot a little bit more up front. And then my lamian is great because it will act as a ground cover and it can do sun or shade. So I've got plenty of spaces to tuck that in and give me a little bit of ground cover because we've talked about it before. Here, not only in this forest pansy bed, but other flower beds, is that as your garden grows and matures and you add in more plants, it really helps cut down on the amount of mulch that you have to use every year. It cuts down on your weeding. Of course, it cuts down on erosion because you've got all these fantastic plants that are taking up space and there's no room for the weeds to go. So we're gonna get those in the ground. I haven't exactly figured out where I'm gonna put them. I will do that. And then I do have another hosta. This is Diamond Lake from Proven Winners. I had an extra one hanging out and I need to get it in the ground. So we're gonna do that as well. So we're gonna to try to figure out exactly where everybody's gonna go. And then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to disassemble the container and get these babies into the ground. Okay, so we're gonna go explore together and we're gonna to try to figure out exactly where I'm gonna put these perennials. I was talking to Jerry, he's helping me this morning and I think, let's see if I can get the camera flipped around here. There we go, give you a little update. Doesn't the fall container look nice? Everybody's growing, doing really nicely. Remember that's where I used um, warm weather annuals for fall color. So everybody's very happy. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plant the lamian right here in this little hole. So I have got three of, it's an evergreen candy tuft. So in the early spring, I will have nice pretty white flowers. And then you can see behind there, I've got the absolutely gorgeous Ascot rainbow. There's actually three in there with a container of Solomon seal there in the middle. Lamian, I believe is gonna go right here in the center of that. So that way it can fill in and it will give us lots of gorgeous color ground cover, fill everybody in, and then we're gonna mosey our way over here um, to the area because I've got the hosta and then the two ferns, and those two, of course, three rather, need a lot more shade. Now, I know that right now this is in the sun, and you're like, Jenny, that's in the sun. Why are you gonna plant these shade-loving perennials in the full sun? It's in the sun right now, but it's early in the morning. This area will get, obviously, this lots of good sun right now, and then it gets a beautiful break from that hot afternoon, which will do really, really well. You can see the container that we just planted the other week, and it is doing really well. I will say that when uh, the day after I planted this, I was like, oh no, maybe I should not have put that pink and blue in here, this, the um, pulmonaria. 
It's my most shade loving because it was a little limpy, but she has rebounded and is doing great. So we're going to move on. What we're going to do is go ahead and put the crested surf. That is that beautiful painted fern from Proven Winters right here beside the gecko because that is a really damp area. So we're going to want some um, moisture loving plants right there. Then back here in the back, um, I have right around in this area, right behind this hosta, there is a spot that a euchre is not doing well. So we're going to put the lady in red fern in front of that. And hopefully that will uh, kind of hide the euchre. And then over here, we're going to be dancing with the sun probably. Hello. Here we go. Um, we're going to put the June hosta right here in front i've got an astilbe and i've got a perennial geranium so june is going to go right here because she's nice and small and then i've got one more of the diamond lake that we've got to figure out where we're going to put it it will get nice and big so i'm thinking it's going to go somewhere towards the back but yeah let's just get going this is a perfect time of year for me to do this because sorry there's a bug flying through there um, because we are coming from the end of summer and we're going into fall now calendar wise it may look different from for you than it does me we are north carolina a zone 7b if say you were in a zone 3 maybe you needed to do this a couple of weeks ago because what we want to do is get all these perennials out of the container and into the ground before um, the cold really hits. We want to still have some warm days and weeks so that we've got lots of time for these roots to get really well established. These are all perennials. So when I'm going through here, I'm probably going to be a little rough and aggressive with these plants and that's okay. So we're not too terribly worried about what the top foliage is going to look like. I'm mostly concerned with getting my good roots out. Hori Hori, one of the best absolute garden tools that you can have in your arsenal. So what I'm going to do, because it has a serrated edge, I'm just going to come in here and I am literally sawing out this lamian out of this container because I had one, two, three, four really good sized perennials in this container and that they have been growing all season long and so their roots are really um, <laughs> intertwined with one another shall we say so i really have to kind of get in here and force and pull this out so i can tell that it's coming here we go so there we go this is what we have right we have that great root system you can tell that it's nice and well intact um, but yeah this container was getting starting to get a little bit pot bound so now again is a great time to come in here and clean it up i think what i'm going to do is go ahead and this is going to make a little bit of a mess right here i didn't think all this through but i am going to go ahead and trim this up because I don't want a whole lot of the foliage for the root system to ha have to hang on to and support. So by going ahead and pruning this lamian, I am helping the plant to actually shoot out new growth um, a little bit earlier and it's less stress on the plant. I didn't take a huge amount off, but I did go ahead, go ahead and get some of that cleaned up. And we're gonna go ahead and get the whole ogged, use my biotone and get this one in the ground. As easy as that we have got the lamian in the ground uh, and I did find an irrigation line that runs right beside of it so that will be perfect for this lamian and lamian is a great ground cover depends on your variety sun or shade this one can do either one so of course in this spot it'll get a lot more sun and it will just fill in right here around the candy tuft and it's easy if it's if it gets a little too um, 
happy in a spot. It's very easy to just cut it back and keep it trimmed up, but it'll be really pretty. And then this one does bloom white flowers. So that will be perfect next to this candy tuft and just fills in next to this cat mint that I have right here that is also white. So the whole plan is just all coming together. Now what we're gonna do is move the container over and we're gonna go ahead and get those two ferns and the June hosta in the ground as well. All right, my friends, so as easy as that, we have got those four perennials that were in the container and then that one extra hostel, we have got it in the ground. They're gonna be nice and happy in their new home with lots of room to grow. So um, I just wanted to kind of recap and show you the importance of taking those perennials out of the container Yesterday morning, I watered that container really well. Like I thoroughly soaked it. The soil in there, completely dry. Those plants were really starting to get root bound and they obviously they were struggling because they did not look their optimal um, that they should. And that's because that could, they were outgrowing that container and not getting the nutrition that they should. That is the perfect sign to say, ding, 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 ding. You need to move me or I am going to suffer even more. Another thing is to um, put your tags in your containers. That way you know exactly what they are. Um, the lamian that I was using was White Nancy. White Nancy, fantastic lamian that will um, just give you loads of beautiful pure white blooms. And then all my other tags were in there. I will go back and add these. I like to um, <laughs> bury my tags with my plants. So not that they show, but I like to have them in that area so that later on, if I need to go back and dig around and try to figure out what something was, the tags are there. So let's just flip the camera around. Let me show you what exactly everything looks like and to talk about, um, yeah, what we did. Um, First of all, I want to talk about where I put this Diamond Lake Hosta because it may look a little odd to you in its actual location. So here we have it right here behind the landscape lighting. I want you to keep in mind that the surefire begonias and the caladiums are all annuals. So they will not be here next year unless I replant them. This diamond lake will get nice and big. It's right there in front of the blue jangles hosta. They will grow really nice together. And I hope the plan is, of course, is that this hosta will really fill in this whole area. I want to come back um, within the next couple of weeks and fill in here in the front with some of a, it's a perennial grass and then it is an evergreen. I want to say it's Evergold, Everillo, I'll have to look, but it's a beautiful lime green chartreuse evergreen grass that will be nice and kind of wispy and low and I can plant it here in the front. Then that would be a really pretty color. Um, but when Jerry and I were talking, we were like, man, this white caladium is absolutely glowing. 
And can't you imagine it if we had planted more like in the deepest, darkest part back there? It would just be gorgeous. So I am going to make a note of that in my gardening journal for, for my notes for next year as to make sure that I do that. You can already see that the lady in red fern is just sticking her little head up just nice and pretty right there beside the astilbes and in front of, look at that wrinkle in time hosta. That hosta is nice and small, so it'll stay nice and low. Um, we're dancing with the sun here. Another update on the um, your plants they are doing nice and happy we have bug bat here in the front just such a fun little plant look at that and then that gecko is just so stinking cute and then back there in the back is conversation piece nice tall beautiful pictures there doing nicely and then the crested surf will look really nice filled in nice and tall and thick and full different texture different look to it will be really nice and then moving backwards just a little bit here, we have June. And June, again, is gonna be a shorter hosta. I put her pretty close to the edge of, this, of the, um, the walkway right here. That way, if she spills over, it'll really kind of soften that edge. So I don't mind a bit if she does spill over. We have those nice, deep, dark chocolate astilbes. Really fun, nice color contrast. And in the back, there is that perennial geranium. So those are all looking good. And then of course that lamian that was back there. But now is the perfect time for you to be working in your perennial gardens. Um, what will we do as far as maintenance on these guys? Well, it'd be pretty easy because the irrigation is of course running in this flower bed. And I planted everybody where they would be nice and happy with the irrigation. I will keep my eye on everybody for the next two weeks to make sure that they are getting adequate water. And then after that, I really can forget about them and just let them be. Maintenance on this bed for the fall is we will wait until all the leaves fall, probably until we get a good frost or freeze. That way all my annuals will be gone. I can come in here and really clean up this bed and then do a nice top dressing of compost or, or something of that nature so that again we're just overall adding to the health and the nutrition of this soil because your soil remember is probably your top assistant in the garden if you have great healthy soil then you are going to have great healthy plants so adding that compost and nutrition at least once a year at this time it's perfect to do that, so that is what we will do. But if you have perennials in your containers, start thinking about where can I put them into my garden, especially if they have outgrown the containers. If you've got perennials that are nice and fat and sassy and happy in their containers, and they're, no, they're not showing signs of any stress, leave them alone, they'll be fine. But if you do need to move some, start thinking about it now and get them in the ground before the cold hits. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.